You hear his corner, watch the throws, watch the throws. Good kick there, but look at that good return kick. Zabi doesn't give you a whole lot of time to reset. Just over two minutes here to go round two. There's just such a fluidity. He just mixes everything so soon. He got him with it. He got him. <laughs> and he got his wrist again. Look at that. Two on one. Reaching across. Now he's trying to get his legs in. He's got both hooks now. He's got that back mount. And Davis is in a lot of trouble here. That I'm going on the chin. Yep. He's got to attack that hand. If you're Davis, you got to be attacking that hand right now. Zabit exercising some patience here, softening Davis up. He's going to shake oh, him off. Oh, this happens again. Oh, look at this. Oh, he's got him in a banana split. Oh, man. Same oh. arm bar. The same knee bar, rather. But this guy, but this. Look at that. Davis Davis. Free play brought to you by Nemiroff. Bold character since 1872. There's that beautiful trip that he loves. And then once he got him on the ground and got his back, look how he ducks under, grabs a hold of the leg, drops him, and extends that knee bar. That is the less painful <laughs> version of it. Cody Stamen got the sideways one from Aljo. <laughs> the sideways one sucks. But this one's not fun either. And the way he got it, he hung in there for a little bit. You see him just He's trying not to up, tap. Man. But this is a hamstring ripper, and he just couldn't take it anymore. He wasn't going anywhere. Man, so impressive. Yeah, he was in for the night. Another leg kick. Did that, one seemed, yeah, that. that one seemed to hurt the champ a little bit. You saw Habib take a bad step after that leg kick landed. And now Gaethje goes inside and lands. Nermago Meadow back to the well with that front kick. Oh, beautiful takedown by Nermago Meadow. He gets the back. Wow. Right into the full mount. I mean, that was a fantastic transition with a lot of time. He's going to go right back to that same position. Oh, he's going triangle here. Setting up triangle into the arm bar. Oh, triangle choke by the Mega Metal. Oh, as Gaethje goes back, trying. Oh, it's up. It's up. He's tapping. It looks like he's tapping. Beat the interim champion like that. He's that, man. I mean, Gaethje landed some beautiful kicks, but once Habib got him to the ground, they were they were just on a different level. Right here, Habib goes to the mount. It looked like he was going to go to an arm triangle, but immediately he goes back into the same position as the first round. Looked like he was going to attack arm bar, but instead he goes triangle. I mean, I've seen him do this before in the, rest, in the practice room, but I have never seen him pull it off in a fight. Didn't know if he would be comfortable enough to try it. But right here, you see Gaethje try to pull back. Then he starts to tap here. I don't know how this wasn't seen. As he slams Habib down, watch his left arm, John. There's a tap. There's the first There's a tap, second right. tap. You know, he tapped four times again, and um, eventually he passed out, and Habib keeps that championship. Uh, what a phenomenal performance by the champ. And honestly, this guy's the number one pound for pound fighter in the world, unquestioned after dominating the interim champion like that, especially after Justin looked as he did against Tony Ferguson. Team's in, but it's not super tight yet. Now it's in. Dustin Poirier working on a guillotine here. Nurmago Medov staying composed. Gets him off him for a second, and he sticks to the sticks to the guillotine to keep it, and that's in. That's in tight. But turning to a hip the way he's doing buys him some air. He sticks with it. Wow! Nurmago Medov his head out, crowd goes bananas. And now Nurmagomedov knows how tired Dustin Poirier's arms are, and he gets right on the hand control, and this is what we saw to Curtis Blades earlier, is the hand control on the heavyweight. In the same position, the top leg position, and now his head's higher than Poirier, so Poirier's gotta get all that weight off him before he can get away. But first and foremost, he has to attack the hand control of Khabib. Khabib's father, Abdulmanap, right there. Proud to be in his son's corner tonight. Now, a possible... Nope, 
And the Magomedov bails. It's enough to make it real ugly. It's just mean. Neck cranking you always yeah. right across your jaw. You can't breathe. It hurts your nose. And it's not really. That's in. That's in. Nurmagomedov under the chin. There's the top. Khabib Nurmagomedov, 28 and 0. Incredible. And then the speed is just so, so quick how he gets in. Pushed you against the fence. And this is a great guillotine. I mean, this is in. But this is the this is what he's got. This is his Hail Mary right here, Dustin Poirier. It's in, and he did not give up on it. But the way that Khabib kept moving his hips side to side to get space and eventually work his neck out, that took all the air out of Dustin to go for that last guillotine and all the all the muscle out of his arms. And then that allowed Khabib to be able to go for that choke at the end. He softens him up a little and then sinks it in. And you see him get the hand behind the head, and he knows that that's it. Beautiful finish, perfect display of mixed martial arts grappling from Khabib Nurmagomedov again. Well, since UFC 178 in 2014, when Poirier fought Conor McGregor, he had lost just one of 11 fights while taking on a murderer's row of UFC talent. Back mount. There's the choke. He's got it. It's under the neck. There it is. Nope, it's on the chin. There's the top. Got his back, got his neck, got under the neck, was cranking his neck. It was really more of a neck crank than it was even a choke. If you look at it, he's not even under the chin. And Connor forced the tap. He's trying to get out of it. Connor's in serious trouble. One minute on the clock. Diaz gets the ball. My goodness. Now he's got, he's got the got back. Side. in deep, deep trouble. Connor gives up his back. Nate sinks in the choke, pounds on him again, and just locks it in deep. Here in the third, he looks fired up, and Ortega with the takedown. But gave it up, went to his back. But you know what? Ortega is so good off of his back, that might have been a part of the strategy all along if he couldn't get the takedown pull guard. Because his guard is very good. Thus, and Diego yeah. lets him up. Yeah, Diego's like, eh, no thanks. But again, on the ground, pulls him in, and let's see what Diego decides to do. Brandao Joe started his training in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu at age 14. Brian Ortega is so active off of his back that it just it makes fighters very uncomfortable. And he's such a classically trained jiu-jitsu guard. Gracie jiu-jitsu black. It says it all. Oh, he's got it. Can he lock it down? He's gonna finish with right this. Here. He's got a choke. Looking for the win. He's moving to the mount. Can he he's lock it in? into a guillotine here. Diego's in deep, deep trouble because Brian Ortega is a finisher. He's only got one arm in play, though. Diego's out, for now at least. But he's going to go to an arm bar. He's going to go to a triangle. Look at, look at how active he is. It's beautiful. He taps, he taps. all over. Beautiful. Brian Ortega by submission. That is just... Here it is, Joe. Yeah, let's look how he does it. So, he gets a hold of him. And here's the scramble. Now, immediately... He goes to Anaconda. He's going to, so he's got a, an arm in choke here. And he moves to the mount, turns it into a guillotine. He's only got one arm in play, so he decides to let it go. And he lets Diego scramble right into this triangle. Slaps it on. And then look at immediately how he turns the angle. See the angle? Man, that is tight as a drum. That's beautiful. Poirier going back to his jab, and there's the right uppercut! Poirier is hurt! And immediately when he's stunned, he goes for that takedown. The uppercut in the knee, really putting Poirier in a bad spot. He's, he's in the door, he's in the right now, and he can finish this! This is a choke down! No, no, no. This is a choke that Zabe has used! Korean Zabe just finished him with his own choke! Here it is, look at this leaping uppercut, bang! Lance right on the jaw. Poirier was in big trouble. Tried his heart out for the takedown, but look at this transition. 
I'm not sure if the Korean Zombie throws anything but finishing moves. Whether it's on the feet, flying knees, big uppercuts. He doesn't want to waste any time. He wants to get his check and get out of here. And you, That's why he's such a fan favorite. You saw the complete MMA arsenal of Chan Sung Jung here tonight. And there were pockets there in that third round where maybe fatigue started to set in. Well, he rose above it in a huge way here tonight. And once again comes through. And again, we watch Garcia closely to see if he goes into slug. Nice uppercut oh. and then a flying yeah. knee by Jung. Here they go. Yep. Oh, my goodness. A kick. Reminiscent, that exchange of fight number one. Jung was good on the ground at the end of round number one. Mounted Garcia in the final seconds of round one. Leonard's on his back here. Throwing his legs up, looking for a submission. Oh, big elbow. But he's got to be concerned. Oh, big elbow from elbows. Jung. Good angle, lots of power. Again, trying to set it up. Leonard's got to be concerned here that he's losing this round There's as well as the last again. one. He's got his back. Oops. Chen Sung Jung's going to flatten him out here, Mike. He's got some time too, Joe. Got 20 seconds. Excellent back control by Jung. Ten seconds now. He's setting up a twister, it looks like. He is. He's got a twister. Oh! Final seconds of the round. Trying oh, to he's get got it. Chan Sung Jung by submission. See here, he, he went from back control where he has two hooks in to wrapping around one, and then he controls the arm and gets it behind his head. Now watch when he puts the arm behind his head. Then he locks the hold of Leonard's hands, or his hands rather, around Leonard's head, and he is just contorting his spine there. He started this with about 20 seconds left in the round. Had the back of Garcia, and then transitions into the twister as Joe talked about. And he's able to finish the submission and win the fight with one second left in the round. Side to side, a lot of foot movement. Look at this. In on the clinch. And this is where Aljo oh, likes to be, man. Aljo's got his back. He loves the early, backpack. Early, Aljo, oh my goodness. early. Oh, oh a, my it's goodness. San Hagen's got to stay calm here. It's not under the chin. Oh, he's, he's stretching him out, though. He's stretching him out. Aljo's got it on the jaw. He's crushing his face. Oh, my goodness. San Hagen's fine. He's starting to turn his head. You hear Elliot Marshall trying to instruct his pupil here, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu brown belt oh, for San Hagen. Oh, he's got to be careful here. Yeah. Oh, he's, oh, he's under the chin. Now he's tight. He's oh, under. He's, he's under. He's he's under. under. Joe, it's over. He's going to sleep. He's going to go to sleep. Yep, he's going to go to sleep. Come on. Put him out. He's going to tap. Oh, he's he's tap. He went out. Look at that. Finished by Al Jermaine. He becomes the first man to finish Corey Sanhagen. The replay brought to you by Nemiroff Bold Character since 1872. And here it is. So he's got the back immediately. Gets the hooks. Hangs on. And, you know, Corey Sanhagen was in a bad situation right from the jump. And Al Jermaine locks up that body triangle just so deftly, so perfectly, and never let go of the back mount. And now here you see he really sunk it in under the chin. He had it on the jaw before, and this is night-night. He taps out, but then goes out. I mean, he, he tapped out just because it was over, right? So he goes and he taps, but then he goes to sleep right afterwards. You see, he's out cold. We, let's see this again. As soon as he taps, I mean, he literally tapped with the last consciousness he had. Aljamain let go immediately, but Corey still went unconscious. What a performance. Ah.